everybody. <laughs> I feel weird every time I say that because then I do that. I'm like, hey everybody, and my mind goes blank. Okay, hey everybody, it's Aquila, and this is a Lefty Nerd Podcast, episode 179. It is now Thursday, uh, September 22nd, 2022. So I normally record through the week and slap it all together and post on Saturday. This week is going to be a little different. We will be at the Shenandoah Fiber, Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival this weekend. So, uh, well, we'll be there Saturday. <laughs> I think it's two days. It is two days. Um, that is in Berryville, Virginia. And so this, you won't see this until after uh, we are home from that because I want to get some footage from the festival and post it because I don't have a lot that I've recorded for the week, but I have some stuff to show you. Uh, uh, this is a podcast about mostly knitting. There is some machine knitting. There is crocheting. There is other crafty things that happen. And yeah, that's about it. So welcome to any new subscribers. My subscriber count, I'm like at 1,600 some, and I think that's crazy. Like, I can't believe, like, I'm on the higher side of 1,500 now that I'm going to be going towards, like, 2,000. Like, I started this, like, four years ago? I don't even know. All I know, or five years? I don't know. All I know is I can't believe that I have that many people that watch me. So thank you, thank you, thank you for watching, and thank you for returning every week if you're a returning viewer. So I really do appreciate it. I will probably round up the video with a winner from last episode for Recalibrate. So stay tuned to the end for that. I feel like giving people a week that's like my, shouldn't say loyal view, but not everybody can watch it in a timely basis. I get that. But I appreciate all the people that do watch it pretty quickly. And I, it's crazy to see like my numbers, like in the YouTube studio app. It's just, it's just wild. It's wild. It's, it's been a ride. All right. So I showed you guys last week. <laughs> In the last episode, I should say, because it may have not have been a week. I don't even know. All I know is I started this project and I finished it in less than three days. So you guys are probably all very excited. I know Hayes is excited, but I finished the Boho Chic crop top. It's so good. It's so good. She is begging, begging to wear it, like begging. And I'm like, no, it needs to stay pristine until after the skate party and then you can wear the crap out of it you can wear it with long sleeve shirts you can wear it with turtlenecks you can do do your thing girl like she is all about like she wants to wear all the things it's pretty amazing so because i didn't let her wear this i'm gonna pop in a few pictures here this is the diente i D i'm not sure how you pronounce it it's a supposed to be a uh tunic top and I made this when she was really little. And I posted this on Instagram, so you guys may have already seen it already. But I made this in the 18-month size. She wasn't even 18 months at the time I made it. But I, I posted it, and the yarn was from Knitting in Color. And she's pretty local, so I see her at festivals. And I showed her the top at one of the festivals, and she snapped this picture of Hayes when she was just a wee babe. I mean, it's crazy. But... Because yarn is like stretchy and whatnot, not all yarn, but like this yarn was wonderful. It worked out really well. The size I made fit her for a long time and then it got kind of put away. And I was like, well, Hayes, I won't let you wear that top, but you want to wear this top? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, it might not fit, but she put it on and it fit like a tank top. Like it was pretty, pretty awesome. So just flashback of um, some old knitting stuff. She is... Uh, wanting a new one in the current size that she is now which I have the pattern and it goes up to a 10 year old so I am going to make that I think we're going to dye some yarn together and then I'll make her a new top oh so let's get back to the the, the, the boho top ready OMG <laughs> so I told you guys it would go in rainbow so it goes uh, this way, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink. I know pink's not in the rainbow or black, but 
I needed eight colors. <laughs> I always try to get a good photo, but like I can't. <laughs> Maybe I can get Hayes to like wear it and I'll get a photo for the snapshot. It's so good. And she only wanted fringe in this color at the bottom. So that's what we did. That's what we did. It is done. It's super cute. It's so cute. All right. Now you guys have seen it. Now I got to put it up and hide it so she doesn't like try to steal it and wear it. <laughs> it's funny. One thing I made last week, totally forgot to show you guys. I guess maybe I didn't think it was done or maybe it really wasn't done by the time I recorded. I'm not quite sure. But I have made dolls on my circular sock machine. I have an Earl backer and I've made dolls using just different techniques on the machine. The first doll I ever made was this cutie patootie here and she has shoes, skin tone, she does have bloomers on and the skirt has the pico hem. You do all these like this here and this here and this stitching here, you do that afterwards and you'll see that on all these dolls, you do that after. Then you switch and I did like, you know, a little folded thing there, like a, like a cuff would be on a sock and kept going and then did the hat. And then she got some piggy, piggy tails and a little face. Hayes loves her. Hayes has a top in this same color that John dyed and um, so she, She's like, it's my, it's matches me. She loves it. So then I just, I was like, what else could I make? And Andy, the knitress was making all kinds of awesome stuff. Like I'm not even close to the, like sh she was making like the bride of Frankenstein and stuff. They were amazing. <laughs> like they looked so good. So I was like, what can I do? So I made a witchy witch. So she has her black shoes and she has stockings and she also has bloomers and she has a really long skirt. She's taller. She's bigger than the other doll. I'll show you comparison. And then I did this crazy elongated toe at the top and closed it up. And then I just crocheted a brim to go on it and added some hair and safety eyes and whatnot. So here's her witchy. So I, I, was, I wanted to make another one. I like making them. They're fun. You can get a little creative with it. And so I decided to make her another one. Now this is the big sister to the first one because she's like, can you make it her big sister? And I was like, sure. She's like, the only requirement was she wanted to have cuffs on her pants. That was it, that was the requirement. So started with the feet or shoes or socks. I'm not quite sure if they're shoes or socks. Then I did the same thing I did kind of here with the the hung hem and then when you sew it down it separates it so you have two but it is like you know a hung hem so then she has pants she has a green sweater this is also yarn <laughs> he has a top in this yarn too and then she got this she got like a baseball type hat that's what I was trying so what I ended up doing was this really crazy little toe in the front and then I hung hung it on the machine and then I did a normal toe at the top and then I added her some wild hair. I didn't piggy braid, I didn't do the piggy braids. <laughs> I didn't do the braids for her. I took the yarn and I unraveled all the um, plies and I gave her hair and I love her. And she now has a face. Hayes was upset that um, she had not had a face yet. So she got a face this morning. So that's her, that's her big sister. Love these they're so much fun I, I have ideas for other ones and I just haven't done it yet the other thing is actually for haze also so I showed you guys that green retro velvet yarn I completely scrapped the pattern I thought I was gonna make it I the first part that you cast on is the pockets and they were even though I knew my gauge and I went down a size and then when I did the pockets, I went down another size because I went down to the second size, which was like for a size three, four or something because my gauge was larger, which I knew that, right? I knew I was getting 12 stitches to four inches. So I had talked to Andy a little. That's She's my go-to man. And Andy was like, did some math with me and we both were coming up with the same like math with 
if it's three stitches per inch and she's a 27 inch chest, then I needed like uh, 27, 27, and 27, whatever that comes to, right? She needs like 70 stitches on the needles to do a round, right? So that's how you do it. You, you know your gauge, you know how many inches you need to make the, the final product and you go with it. So I took that and I Googled like a raglan calculator for a raglan pullover. Now I wasn't making a pullover, but I knew, I know, I've been knitting 20 years. I know I can break this pattern down with the calculator giving me some of the numbers and then breaking it down so on my needles it is in the right situation for knitting a raglan uh, cardigan. So I just took the number of whatever would have been on the front and I split it in half. I added my markers, then you have your sleeve caps, added my markers, and then you have the back. So it was a flat piece of fabric versus in the round. Because the pattern generator gives you the number for casting on the collar part, which I wasn't doing, I fast forwarded in the pattern generator to where the number of stitches I would need before I started my raglan increases. So to do that, it was 41 stitches is what I think I, I needed to start before I put all my markers in. So I cast on 31, so I got a little bit of extra fabric in the back. So in the cast on 31 at each side on the knit sides of the fabric, because it's stockinette stitch, um, I was increasing on each knit side, on the knit side on each end. Increased until I got from 31 to 41. So now I'm at this point and I put all my markers in and then I fast forward in the pattern till it says how many I need for the back panel uh, to be the accurate number. And I got to that number. So let, let's just show you. That's a lot of talking and not a lot of showing, um, but I had to just use the knowledge in my brain to make this work. And so I am making this up with a little help from pattern generator and just doing a gauge swatch to know where, like, how to make this work for her. I put it on her this morning and here's a picture. It fits. It's a little bit, I wouldn't say big, it's roomy. It's gonna give her room to grow in this. So I am very excited. I've split for the sleeves. And what I will do is I will go and I will pick up the whole edge to do that collar. But here we are. So you can see my increase is a little, it's, it's probably a little hard to see because this yarn is a little weird, but there's my increases. There's my sleeve cap. My stitches are on hold. There's my increases on the back and I am good to go. Ugh. I am, I am impressed with myself. I know that I shouldn't be and I should just be like, I, I know you could do this. Okola, you can do this. Like, and I did. And I did this and she is very excited about it. It's kind of bunched up because of um, using a very short cape, not a short cable, but I don't want it to be super long, but it's coming out really well. Oh my God, I bought three balls of this. I really don't think I'm gonna need three, but you know what? So be it, I have it. Oh, that was a truck starting up, that was weird. Okay, that's what I have to show you. And also I will, I will also be at the Crankin. There's a Crankin for this on Friday and I'm packing up my machine for the first time ever. And I'm really having some anxiety about it because I'm like, don't forget your weights. Don't forget your tools. Don't forget extra yarn. Don't forget waste yarn. You know, make sure you have yarn on cones so you're ready to go. And then I gotta take my machine off and pack it. I'm not packing it back in the box it originally comes in. You take a lot of pieces apart for that. I bought a tote. I have some bubble wrap. I have some extra like old t-shirts that I'm going to use and I'm going to pack it in that and then I'll have all my extra stuff in there with it and I feel very confident it will be okay. I'm just going to take a simple chair we have and of course my table for it and oh, I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie. I've never taken it anywhere and I sometimes feel like my knowledge is not that great. I've had it two years and I don't want somebody to come up and be like, 
ask me a question that I don't know. And I will be honest, I'm not going to make something up. I'll be like, you might want to like talk to one of the other people and or we can all talk together and figure out, you know, the answer to that question. Because I have a feeling maybe, 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 I, maybe not. Maybe, maybe I'll be all right. I don't know, but it makes me nervous. Because I know I post some videos on here about my machine, and sometimes I worry I'm giving out misinformation. I worry all, all the time about giving out misinformation, even with my knitting, but that's just, that's just me. Okay, now I'm going to stop. You'll probably see clips next from the festival, because I don't know, I don't have anything else to show you right now. Okay, this is uh, way later in the day uh, of the last day of September, and I need to pick a winner for the recalibrate pattern. Shayna had decided that she's gonna um, give a copy and I'm gonna give a copy. So if you have access to Ravelry, please message me, the winners, please message me on Ravelry, and I will give your name to Shayna, and, or I will gift it straight from from me I will gift it from Ravelry if you cannot use Ravelry which I know some people can't use Ravelry if you have Instagram please message me there if you do not have a, either any of those options in the comments down below state that you ha you don't have access to that and we will figure something out um yeah sorry I, I'm whew brain uh yeah I totally forgot that I said at the beginning of this I was editing it and said I was gonna pick winners so I already have it loaded it says there was 44 um, and I'm gonna pick a comment pick a winner it's hopefully this one works because the last time it was weird pick a winner all right Gertrude Server, I would love to make a recalibrate sweater one day. So congratulations, Gertrude, it's not Server, Gertrude Sever, S-E-V-E-R, if you can even see that, you can't see that. Congratulations. Let me close that and I'm going to pick one more comment. Mandy Henderson, your recalibrate is beautiful. That's sweet, sweet of you and the designer to give away a pattern. So congratulations, Mandy Henderson. Henderson and Gertrude Sever, Sever, sorry, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. I usually will ask people how to pronounce their name before I try to butcher it. So congratulations to the both of you. Please reach out to me so we can get those patterns to you. I really enjoyed making mine. I really enjoy wearing mine. So I really hope you also will make one and love it as much as I do. So congratulations. Now, back to the show. <laughs> it has been several days. Several, several days. It is now September 30th. It is the last day of the month and I just need to round up this bit. I'm going to talk about a little bit of stuff and then the next episode will probably be an acquisition episode so I get it if you don't really want to watch. I understand. Um, I'm going to throw in footage. So we went to the Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival. Very exciting. We love that festival. It's super quaint and it's not like overwhelming. They have animals, good food. So it was, it's a good time. Friday night they host a Crankin and can you hear that? Yeah. She's singing. Uh, yeah, she's home from school because we're dealing, she, she wasn't feeling really good. So I just kept her home and, uh, I just don't want to like, you know, spread the ick if there is an ick. So it's just easier. <sighs> Where was I? Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival. So they have the crank in. I had went, uh, speaking of her and the ick a few years back to the crank in on Friday night just to see the machines because I hadn't had my I hadn't had my machine yet and um so yeah she puked all over the stage and everybody remembers that that was there 
So let me just say it's real small. I wish it was more people. I was really hoping to be like, pick people's brains and whatnot, but that's fine. Totally cool. Uh, Bethany is the one who runs the Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival and I, it was nice to see her again and I was really excited to take my machine. I was able to set up my machine, talk to a few other crankers, and I also got to show people I cranked one whole sock for um, the some people that had come up and they had finished setting up their booth because everybody sets up on Friday. She didn't do it. And so they have a booth and I am going to show you an acquisition. So this will all come back in the next episode. This is their card. This is Whirly Bird Fiber Art. Kimberly is the person's name and she does a lot of, she does bats of fiber and all kinds of different fiber. I bought some fiber. Didn't need to buy her fiber, but I bought some fiber. So I want, I, I was able to show them a whole sock being cranked and that was so much fun. I really enjoyed like, um, showing people out of my comfort zone because even though I show you guys on video you're not just standing there so I don't have the pressure of like messing up <laughs> but it was fun so I did that I cranked a pair and a half of socks while I was there a pair and a half was that I, I cranked three socks <laughs> uh, yeah so that happened and went back uh, John had the kid, went back, we camped, and then we got up and we went to the Fiber Festival. I'm going to insert a picture here of all three of us wearing our sweaters, all made by me. Um, I know you haven't seen John's actually finished sweater here on the podcast, but I really want to have him on so he can talk about it. And yeah, so that was us. And we get there, and of course I run into people, and I'm going to insert pictures. I'll, I'll insert pictures as I talk or maybe over my face, however big the picture needs to be. Uh, I ran into <laughs> Sweet Pea Chickadee, Kim, right? Why am I blanking? I'm all of a sudden blanking. It's Kim. And Brooke. And I, I know, her daughter's name is just in my head. Okay, so ran into them. We hung out for quite some time. That was so nice. I was so excited to see them before Rhinebeck, only because, um, Rhinebeck's so big and sometimes you just don't know if you're gonna run into the people that you're hoping you're gonna run into, right? So it was really nice. We hung out for quite some time. We went shopping. I went and showed her, um, let me show you the card. So Lamb is another knitting machine company. They have their knitting machine there too because Bethany, the one that runs Shenandoah, has one. So I was able to go, I was able to look at their machine and it's just a whole different setup, right? So. It's really interesting though. So like creative minds, right? And I did buy something from their booth. So I'll show you that in the next episode also, but lamb knitting machine. So I was showing, um, why am I, I should just stop this and check. We went and saw their booth because you know, not, you don't get to see all the different machines all the time, not in person, right? So that was exciting. And we did some shopping and we ran into Karen, who is um, also one of my followers and uh, I would say a friend. And we hung out for quite some time too. And then this is just, I, 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 I want to maybe blush again. This is just, it's so odd. I don't know why. Okay. So we're all standing around in the little field where we kind of had our blanket and our stuff. And I hear, that's Aquila! And I'm like, oh my goodness, like, who? <laughs> FXBG Fibers, Laura, and her family, I'm gonna totally blank on their names, um, but her children watch my podcast with her. And that is so sweet. Like, I, I'm like, it's so sweet, right? They both were, they, they, I got big hugs, I got pictures, I got permission to post the pictures. I wouldn't have done that because I know kids, YouTube, the interwebs, all the things, but I got permission and I just wanna say hi to you guys and thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for finding me and the big giant hugs because that made my day. It made my day and uh, I, 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 like I was, 
Is, is the word flamux? That's not the right word. I just, I don't know. It was so, it was so nice to meet them and everyone that I met that day. And I just, I don't know. I know, you know, I do this podcast and I've met so many like cool friends and people that don't live near me, but these guys live near me and like we could hang out sometime. Like that would be cool. <laughs> so it was just, it's just, <sighs> they were telling me their favorite like parts of what episodes they liked. Like I can't even remember all this stuff. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I can't, I can't even. So <sighs> It was a lot of fun. The kids were all running around and yeah, that's, that's the, the, all the feels that I want when like festivals happen. That's all the feels, right? So I'm going to insert more video after this. We went into like so many booths. We talked to so many people and yeah, I'm going to let John tell his story of the social experiment because it was pretty funny and it's regarding his sweater. So we'll talk about that too in the next episode. Hopefully, I, if, if all goes right, like things just don't always fall in place, you know, life happens, like, and then of course, there's all this, all the feels for everything that's happening right now with um, Cuba and Florida and everybody that's been impacted with uh, Hurricane Ian, and you know, it's gonna eventually affect us, but not the way it affected people there where they lost homes and, and, and lives and everything. So, you know, me saying, you know, my life was um, a little crazy, like that's, that's on a, on a scale of like one to a hundred, my life was like at a five for, for just being like uprooted for different things in the past, you know, week and a half. Um, and, and there's our way above that. So, um, woo, one extreme to another, I'm sorry. But we, we also, we were walking around and um, John, I'll let, maybe I'll let John tell that story too, but um, I just want to, I don't know if um, Sue actually watches, but we got to hang out with Sue at the campground and because um, she was like, we have the same bracelet. I, I shouldn't tell that story. Okay. But she gave me this, she dyes yarn. So her name is Sue and she is up in um, Maine. And she has like fibers and hand spun yarns, I believe, in different places. Um, so you can buy different stuff from her um, at, I think, a shop up there. I, I wasn't completely um, clear on that, but she dyes yarns. And I, I was telling her we have just Dharma dyes. And she gave me this catalog because this is what she uses. And I just thought that was really nice of her. Um, so this is, these are called, um, I guess the brand is called Landscapes. I, am I wrong about that? No, it's called Landscapes. I'm sorry. So they have all these different lines of colors and you can buy like five or six in a thing. So she gave me this, um, and said, you know, I, we should try some different, uh, dyes so yeah landscapes isn't that cool like I guess they're maybe out of Australia because all the stuff was like landscapes of Australia colors inspired by the clarity and light of the unique natural beauty of the Australian landscape and then this one is changing seasons so it's all the different colors for different the, the seasons and I guess their interpretation of colors right oh yeah so they are in um Australia D the dyes are made in Australia by Craft Color. So maybe I can get them from Craft Color too. I, d I don't know. I haven't dug into this part yet, but it was very nice of her to give me this. And so we could do more research on maybe some other dyes that we would want to use for future. So I got her card. I didn't want to show all her information. I didn't know how much she wanted really out there to you guys. So, but it was really nice to hang out and meet her husband. And we, they came to our campsite for a little bit. We went to theirs for a little bit and talked to all the different fibery stuff. And by then, Hayes was getting really tired. She was tired. And then we left. And that was, that was it. So I'm going to insert some video. Um, just a little bit of video. I have some booths that I took video of. I'll try to put the names of the booth. Um, like in the, on top of it.
but yeah, so we acquired probably more stuff than we needed to, and yeah. Oh, I do have progress to show you guys on my projects though, so let me show you that real quick before I fully end this video here. So, in here, in my naughty knitting sack, is Hazel's sweater, which is so inappropriate to have her sweater, but it's a big bag, and I need it to hold this giant vel retro velvet sweater that I have going on. So, if you haven't seen an episode before, this is the retro, like, previous episodes where I've shown this. This is the Retro Velvet by Premier. It is, <clears throat> excuse me, a bulky weight yarn, but I think on Ravelry they considered it a super bulky. I am pretty much doing this on the fly based on a few numbers I plugged into a website. So I am now on the second ball. Hazel has tried it on many times, so I know I am on track. So let me find. I had put pockets, I, I had put the yarn on hold for pockets, so you're going to see that here. Kind of, if I can. So here's the neck band, the two arms, stitches are on hold. I put stitches on hold to pick up for pockets. And for the pockets, I decided to do seed stitch again, even though, I mean, in this yarn, you really can't tell it's seed, seed stitch. It looks definitely just like... Well, it's broken seed stitch, right? <laughs> Is there a broken? No, it's not broken. It's just seed stitch. But you can barely tell. But, I mean, you can tell against where it's stocking at versus that. So she'll have pockets on both sides. I actually have stopped doing that seed stitch for a few rows. And I'm going to need her to try this on again and probably start the ribbing, which I don't think you're going to see either in this yarn because the definition of the yarn, you're just not going to tell. But it's coming out wonderfully. Mommy, we need help. Mommy, we need help. False alarm. Thought the cat was stuck to the blanket. He was. Okay, well, he's not now. So, how, how are you loving your sweater so far? It's good. It tastes like Okay, don't listen to her. All right. I did cast on something new, which isn't a new pattern, because you guys have seen this many a times. I had yarn left over from John's sweater. So what did I do? I cast on a photographer hat. But, Hayes, no, 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 no. Oh my God. Seriously? Be quiet. Okay. Mm. Photographer hat. <clears throat> but I don't think I'm going to make it to 10 inches and be able to do the decreases. But it's in the same color as his sweater. So thanks, Hayes. You just have to. All right, I'm gonna end this because, because I can't deal with all the things that are happening right now. <laughs> all right, well, I hope you are checking in on people and making sure everybody's okay. I know it's really hard. I finally got my final check-in of people um, in Florida that I was making sure to, you know, have some eyeballs on. Um, and yeah, so cell towers have been out and power has been out and people are having lots of issues. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's where we are. And so yeah, just make sure you are taking care of yourself and as many others as possible that you can check in on. And there you go. <laughs> Stay tuned for a video after this, and I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Knit happy.